Boo! Did I scare you? Okay, that was pretty lame, I admit, but they did used to call me Spencer Lame Williams in high school. And speaking of high school, I've put together a list of what I think are the scariest, creepiest, and spookiest board games that I've ever played. I imagine capturing horror in board games is pretty challenging to do without coming off as cheesy. I mean, how can you give someone the willies with a few hunks of cardboard? Well, I think the following 10 games do that pretty well. The idyllic town of Upsideville is no longer idyllic. A terrifying creature is trying to drag inhabitants from the once peaceful town into a horrifying alternate dimension. Now, the concept and aesthetic of the game can't escape comparison to Stranger Things, but really that's about where the similarities stop. In between is a two-player card game. One player is trying to protect the inhabitants, while the other is trying to devour them, thus resulting in a high-stakes tug-of-war style game. Equipped with decks of cards unique to each side, players take turns playing cards and using abilities to draw the townsfolk toward one dimension or the other. I like this game because it's short, easy to learn, and full of tension. The artwork is super creepy, and for the player trying to protect Upsideville, there could be some pretty terrifying moments as you watch your citizens get pulled into the Upside Down, uh, I mean, other dimension. As for the creature, well, those moments are slightly more delightful. Now this is a relatively unknown game that I think deserves more attention. I've only played it online on Tabletopia, but I enjoyed it so much that I just had to put it on this list. For an excellent two-player spooky game, check out In Between. The next entry heavily features zombies, but I don't think that's the scariest part of the game. In Dead of Winter, each player leads a faction of survivors out of a larger colony in a post-apocalyptic world. In this world, most of humanity is either dead or diseased flesh-craving monsters. But oftentimes, some of the players end up being the real monsters. Players are primarily working together toward one common victory condition, but each player gets their own secret objective, and sometimes that means sabotaging the colony for their own gain. One of the reasons this game is on this list is because players can experience a constant paranoia over why the other players did what they just did. There are also the times when you have to move your survivors around the town. Each time they move, players must roll an exposure die that could leave them with frostbite, wounded, or killed by a zombie, leading the bite effect to spread. It's truly a nerve-wracking moment. Then there's the fear of whether or not there will be enough food and supplies, or if the colony as a whole can fend off the hordes of zombies that keep coming. And then you have this crossroad system. During the game, players will have to draw crossroad cards which require them to make very difficult decisions. Like, here's this rando that just wandered up here. Should we let them in? Well, if you're a nice person, your instinct is to say, sure, come on in. But the answer is never obvious. That character could end up coming in and killing some survivors having to make some difficult and sometimes moral decisions can leave you with the fear of making the wrong choice. Can you survive the zombie apocalypse, a harsh winter, and traitors in your mist? It's truly a frightening scenario. For the sake of being thematic, I'm going to do the next segment in total darkness. Are you afraid of the dark? Okay, that's enough of that. I don't want to lose any viewers at this point. Otherwise, the average watch time for my channel will go down, thus decreasing the chances of my videos showing up organically. Of course, viewers could always share my videos to help out. In Nyctophobia, a one versus many game, one player, the axe murderer, tries to chase down up to four other players, the hunted. All players on the hunted team wear blackout glasses and are unable to see the game board. They must reach out and feel their way through a maze of various obstacles in order to find their car. Meanwhile, the axe murderer has full view of the board and watches with glee as their potential victims fumble around in the dark. Playing as the hunted is quite terrifying. If they come across the axe murderer and accidentally touch them, they'll lose health, which of course is very limited for each survivor. They then have to fear the pursuit of the villain while they inevitably ignore the pleas of the audience to not go in there. As the hunter, you can torment the survivors by sneaking up behind them and shouting at them, or wait until they touch a piece and then go ah! All in all, it's a fun and unique gaming experience for both sides. Number seven on my list is Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space, another game about trying to outrun predators. Only this time, the setting is a damaged spaceship in the middle of space. Players are given secret roles at the beginning of the game, either alien or human. For the humans, it's every man or woman for themselves as they try to sneak their way around the ship to make it to one of the limited escape pods. Meanwhile, the aliens are hungry for human flesh and are trying to track them down before they escape. 
The game is played on dry erase flipbooks. Each turn a player will mark on their book the coordinates of the next space they're moving to. Every time the players move on to certain spaces, they have to draw a card. These cards make the players tell the others their position or lie about it, depending on the card. Every card is kept secret from other players. The game is full of uncertainty and suspense, as you never know exactly who is what or who is where. There could be an alien right behind you breathing down your neck at any given moment. Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space is an excellent choice for larger groups because up to eight people can play. It's easy to teach, fun to play, and can be pretty scary at times for the human players. If story-driven spookiness is more your thing, check out Mythos Tales. It's a cooperative game for 1-10 to 10 investigators, though I highly recommend you don't play with more than 4, in which players attempt to solve mysteries set in H.P. Lovecraft's Arkham in the 1920s. And because it's Lovecraft, you'll be dealing with things beyond all comprehension that will test the limits of your sanity! One of the things I really like about Mythos Tales is how open-world it is. The game is made up of 8 cases. At the beginning of each case, players are given an introduction to the mystery with just some basic details. Then, using newspapers, a list of allies, the directory of Arkham residents, and a map of Arkham, the investigators will follow clues from location to location, suspect to suspect, to unravel the mystery and answer the questions posed at the end of each scenario. I like the way the publisher describes it. This is not a typical board game. No dice, no luck, but a challenge to your mental ability. You'll encounter suspicious characters, creepy locales, and horrific abominations. If you like Sherlock Holmes and pulp horror, then this is a game you should check out. I think the game that feels most like a campy horror flick is Betrayal at House on the Hill. It starts off innocently enough. A group of characters make the stupid decision to explore a haunted mansion, but then one of them either gets possessed or becomes a demon or is having a really bad day and just decides to murder everyone. As players explore the house, they'll build it room by room, tile by tile, so the board is different every time. At a certain point, the beginning of the haunt is triggered and one player becomes the betrayer, depending on certain conditions at that time. It's great because you never know who is going to be the one to turn. It then becomes a one versus many game, with each team having their own objective that differs from game to game. It's got a huge replayability factor and I think you can have a really good time with it, just as long as you don't take it too seriously. Next is a game that is as unique as it is spooky. The Faceless is unique in both its premise and mechanics. For centuries, a creature known as Billy Goat has been kidnapping children to feed on their memories, which apparently causes them to lose their faces. A group of kids discover that one of their friends has been kidnapped by Billy Goat. They must travel to another dimension called Duskworld so they can retrieve the boy's memories and bring him back to the real world. In this cooperative game, the team of kids is represented by a working compass. Players will utilize magnetic figures on the edge of the board to manipulate the direction of the compass. Whichever way the compass is pointing is the direction the team will move. The idea is to guide the compass around the board to collect the scattered memory fragments. But watch out for Mr. Creepy Goat! His figure is also on the board and is affected by the magnetic field too. The fear factor increases as Billy Goat approaches or as the team is drawn toward him. You've really got to learn how to control and predict the movements of both the compass and Billy Goat to have any chance of success. Otherwise, you'll be trapped in Duskworld forever! For number three, we return to H.P. Lovecraft's Arkham with Arkham Horror, third edition. It's also a cooperative game about investigators in the 1920s who face terrifying monsters and try to keep their sanity. But unlike Mythos Tales, Arkham Horror, third edition gives players more to work with. Each person will have their own unique character with unique stats and abilities. They'll use tools, allies, and weapons to gather clues and combat the lurking monsters. Each game, players choose one of the ancient ones to go up against. You know, those alien entities who lurk in the emptiness beyond time and space. Each scenario has its own designated plot to experience and sets of monsters to fight, but in general, the investigators need to stop occult rituals and destroy the alien creatures before the Ancient One makes the world their ruined dominion! I prefer Arkham Horror 3rd Edition over a similar game, Eldritch Horror, because Arkham feels much more claustrophobic. Whereas Eldritch is a globe-trotting adventure, Arkham keeps the fight to the streets of, well, Arkham. It just feels more intense, dark, and ominous to me, which is exactly what I'm looking for in a horror-themed game. While definitely being a horror-themed game, number two isn't the scariest game on this list, but I have to rank it so high because of how well it captures classic, time-tested horror. 
I'm talking about Horrified. In Horrified, players work together against classic Universal movie monsters. Wolfman, Dracula, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Yes, I know it's technically Frankenstein's monster, but the rule book takes great pains to point out that referring to the creature as Frankenstein is best for the villagers because there are so many other monsters, it's just easier for everybody that way. Before the game begins, players choose which monsters to play against. Choose fewer monsters for an easier game, or include several to increase the difficulty. Each one must be defeated differently, so different strategies and tactics must be used to defeat them. Horrified is not just a great monster game. It's a great game to introduce new people to the world of board games. It's easy to learn, thematic, and super fun. Plus, games don't take too long, so you can play Horrified and move right along to another spooky game. Maybe the number one pick for this list. Stop me if you've heard this one before. My number one is a cooperative game set in the world of H.P. Lovecraft, in which investigators in the 1920s face terrifying monsters and try to keep their sanity. I realize that Lovecraftian horror is an overused theme, but that doesn't stop me from loving games like Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. It offers a lot of what some of the other games do, monster fighting, investigation, exploration, but this game is run by an app. You play as you would on a physical board, but the app directs the monsters, generates events, and tells the story of your investigation. Plus, it includes atmospheric music, which really helps set the mood. With a number of expansions and downloadable content, there's plenty of horror to experience when you step inside the Mansions of Madness. And there you have it, 10 scary games you can play during this Halloween season, or any season really. If you're interested in purchasing any of the games mentioned, I've put links to them in the description of this video. Note that by purchasing games through the provided links, a portion of your purchase goes to help keep the Lighten Up initiative running. Do you have any favorite scary games that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to check them out. In the meantime, don't take the board game hobby too seriously. Just lighten up. <laughs> Do 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 do